We're probably live by now. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream, where today we're kind of talking about what actually got us into reefing, um, how do we get our start, you know, what's keeping us in it, what's our passion, and yeah, how do we get to where we are today, and you know, what sucks you in, what brings you into reefing? Michael, go for Lancer TV. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Just trying to put. Do you know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put something playing, but I'll just leave it like that. I'm good. Uh, thank you. How are you? Awesome. Good to see you. So, <laughs> connecting the worldwide reefers together today. Oh, yes. That's all oh, about. Yes. And you get an ex exclusive first look at the new Aaron's Aquarium studio. I've it's not very... even shown this studio on my channel yet. Perfect. It's always good to release on Reef to you. It's a good strategy. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to do things, yeah. isn't it? I need to find the chat first, also. Let me just get the chat. There it is. So, let's start with you, man. So, what originally got you into the saltwater hobby? Well, um, it was it was a weird one, actually. Um, I've never I've I've always been interested in fish, but never like the when I grew up, I didn't I couldn't really afford a marine tank or anything like that. Whilst I was when I was younger. So it was one of those where I just never, ever got into it. And then I think it was six years ago now, five or six years ago, um, I, my daughter got gifted a 10 liter tank, which is like two gallons or something like that um, from my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And obviously child being a child, she lost interest. So I had to keep that tank going. And then I gained an interest. <laughs> and then it just spiraled from there really soon that tank i realized once i started doing research i realized that hold on a minute a goldfish a koi carp and a weather loach shouldn't really be in <laughs> a tank that is this big so i decided to get a bigger tank um mm -hmm. and then it just sort of like took off from there and then i did my first youtube video when i set up this proper hodgepodge of a tank it was a proper mix like it had discus angelfish corridoras loads of freshwater fish but like some freshwater fish that you wouldn't normally put with other freshwater fish mm. and that's what sort of like started it with me is because a lot of people said that you can't do this or you can't put this fish with that fish etc and i was sort of like I, I started questioning things and started looking into things a little bit more and then it just started rolling from there and basically my hobby and YouTube started at the exact same time. So it was proper cool. No, oh, very cool. So YouTube actually came really close to the beginning of your saltwater. So you've been doing this a long time then. Yeah. So um, I think I did freshwater for about a year um, and then um, sort of like went into saltwater. The funniest thing was there was, um, there was, a, there was a guy, um, I forgot his name now. Oh, Willie, Willie D Aquatics, he was called. And mm -hmm. we used to talk all the time. He was like one of the first people that I'd met um, on YouTube, him and Infamous Aquatics. Those two were sort of like my first, you know, YouTube friends. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And he was always saying to me, you know, you need to get a saltwater tank. And I was like, no chance am I getting a saltwater tank. Not a prayer. They're too expensive. They look too difficult. I'm never getting a saltwater tank. And he's like, you will, you will. And I was like, mate, I will never get a saltwater tank. I'm happy with discus. I'll never get a saltwater tank. And then... <laughs> Didn't last long. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, mm. it happened. <laughs> yep. So yeah, um, what happened was um, my six foot discus tank um, ended up blowing out. It leaked. Um, so I had to basically get a new tank, um, for all the discus and fix that tank. And I ended up with two tanks. So it was sort of like, what am I going to do with the other one? <laughs> I thought, mm, all right, then I'll let's try it. Salt. Why not? <laughs> give salt water a go. So got a nice big piece of aqua roche, a big aqua roche mm -hmm. tower, um, and, uh, a Ritter iron enemy and a pair of clowns straight away from day one. So Obviously, that caused a, a bit of a hoo-ha. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Was it a proper saltwater tank, or did you convert a freshwater tank, or what did you do? Well, it was a converted tropical tank. So because it, um, I was using a Fluval FX6 canister filter, um, I think I had a, T, yeah, I had a T5 um, strip light, 
and um, a Sechi Voyager 8 Wave Maker. Mm-hmm. And it cost me a fortune. It was like the, the, the Aqua Roche Tower was like 200 pounds. Wait, wait, and they had those way back then? Yeah, well, way back then. <laughs> it was only four, five years ago. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been in it that long, have I, really? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like, it, it was really, it was expensive when I got going, you know, in comparison to a tropical tank where you can go out and spend a couple of quid on, mm. on fish and, um, and stuff like that. It, but obviously look where it's got me today. I've got, I've got this, YouTube, mm. you know, get to travel <laughs> the world. I'm going to be with you in Heck Canada. Yeah. Quick, in soon, a few weeks, less than a month. Less than a month. We're going to be at the Niagara Coral Show, aren't we? Heck yeah, we are. That's going to be awesome. Have you ever been to Canada? No. It's no, first always, time? First time. And not only that, first time I'm ever going to go to Canada, and I'm staying in a hotel that overlooks the falls. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a good trip. <laughs> I mean, you, can, you can't ask for more, can you? And, and YouTube's done that. You know, YouTube's mm-hmm. brought that. So, And this hobby has brought that. You know, I never... I never would, you know, like when we went to Las Vegas to Macna, you know, never would or have ever gone to Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's the first time I met you in person, which is crazy, right? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's what I mean. So mm-hmm. it, I think YouTube and this hobby, you know, if you it, it, it's brilliant. You know, even silly things like even if you don't do YouTube and you just do the hobby, mm-hmm. you know, the stuff that you learn. You know, I le- I've learned more about chemistry and biology since doing this hobby than I had learned in school. <laughs> oh, hands down. Definitely have. And um, quick shout out, Derek, $5 super chat. Two best here. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Two best. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't know. For me, it's cool to... One, one big thing is like locally, there's not a ton of reefers. And just the online thing, you know, like me and you become friends from just having reef tanks and we're both YouTubers would just chat and whatnot, right? And you know, we've actually met in Vegas, hung out, I'm gonna see you in less than a month in Niagara Falls at the Niagara show. It's pretty awesome. So it's really crazy all the things that have come out of just keeping a saltwater aquarium. Isn't it? And and I know like yeah. silly things like when I'm watching YouTube and I'm and I'm, you know, obviously when I was starting out and I'm watching all of these different YouTubers and things like that and you come to sort of like um, really look up to certain YouTubers. You know what I mean? You know, you really sort of like aspire to them and, you know, you think, God, oh, you know what? I'd love to meet that person and whatever mm-hmm. else. And I've been able to, you know, there's so many people that I've physically met. Considering I'm in the UK, like to, right now, it's 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, it's one of those things where it's just, you know, it's opened up so many doors and so many things where you get to meet these people and you get to talk to people from all over the world. You know, like mm-hmm. I've got one lad called Sean um, from Australia. Um, he goes by the name of G'day Reefing. You know, he comes on my live streams all the time and, I've m- and I met him in Vegas as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all people from literally every corner of the earth I've met. Him. Yeah, That's I mean, crazy. it's so cool. So really cool. crazy. Yeah. No, that's pretty awesome. Now, do you think, uh, actually, question, do you have a tank in your studio, or is this just for YouTubing? This is just for YouTubing. Okay. That's no still pretty sweet, though. There was Back a tank there, but yeah, it's not it's in. hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is literally just for presentation things. So, like, yep. if I'm going to be doing a product um, unboxing review type thing, that'll be here. Um, mm-hmm. If I set up, like... You know, like say for example the Fluvalevo series that I've just done. Yep. You know, if I set up a tank that can sit on here, then yeah, I'll do stuff like that. Um when I start doing live streams again, you know, I'll be live streaming from here. I can get guests because like there's enough space for like one, two, <laughs> <laughs> three. You know, there's plenty of space for for guests here as well. Mm-hmm. Um so I can, you know, it, it, I can really sort of like do a lot more now. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And this, this is how it's set up. It's still quite basic. I've not finished it, as you know, when I was panicking trying to get everything started. <laughs> <laughs> the live stream was a mass panic trying to get mics working and everything else. But yeah, no, it's it. good. It's coming along. It's looking awesome. Good, now, good. now, now that you've been in the hobby, case okay, is another question. Uh, actually, first of all, when people were talking about multiple tanks in the chat a few minutes ago, 
So do you find you get sucked into more and more tanks or have you kind of tone yourself back down and try and keep one system or you think you're always gonna have a couple on the go on and off or uh for me i i find i find it hard to if in my home i find it hard to have multiple tanks because there's always one that i'm most fixed on do you know what i mean there's always yeah. one tank that's like say for example the, the one you know that gets a lot of attention Whereas mm -hmm. the flu believe, to be honest, the flu believe doesn't really need much much attention. But you know, when when I, when I start getting multiple tanks, some tanks will suffer because I can't give them all the same attention. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but um, I think when I first started out, I think at the at one point I had how many did I have? Because I had a rack. I had a five by two by two, a six by two by two. Mm -hmm. um, uh, two two foot cubes, um, and two you call them forty gallon breeders. I had two of those, mm -hmm. um, and in the other room, I had a four foot by four foot cube with African cichlids in it. So I did used to have multiple tanks in. I've actually even got a funny video that I did with mass aquariums on multiple tank syndrome. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yep. not so much anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I think. And I have been toying with the idea because I want a, like a more of an LPS dominated tank over like the current one, which is more SPS dominated. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to do different things, but you can, you know, obviously there's certain, like say for example, my tank has got that much flow. Mm -hmm. If I was to put, you know, a cataphilia dead center in the middle of the tank, it would rip it back. Yeah, just, just skeleton for the next day. Where'd it go? Yeah, it wouldn't be there. <laughs> yep. Oh so, yeah, huh. so I'd, uh, I'd have to do something like that. That's fair. I, I've realized I have way too many tanks right now, so I'm trying to I'm trying to consolidate now. I mean, my new big ones helped because like my Red Sea Nano is basically cleared out. I took my fish out. Most of my corals have all taken out last night, and they're in my new big tank. And some of them are in my lagoon. So I'm trying to consolidate down to two plus the quarantine. I like, I like the new tank. I like the new water box, by the way. I do like that. Thank you, thank it, you. It looks very, very nice. I like the way it's situated. Because you've been, you've been, see, that's another thing as well, isn't it? How, how you've been planning that top years. of the stairs <laughs> aquarium for, 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 for what it feels like years. You know it what has. I mean? It really has been. <laughs> and <laughs> literally your whole house has evolved <laughs> around that mm. tank. So it's that's true. How, that's how crazy this hobby is, isn't it? You know, how it's not like we just fit something in. You when make it work. Really, yeah, you make, <laughs> you make it work or sometimes you make your house work around it. <laughs> well, to be honest, actually, speaking of that, you can kind of see like in the background photo um, where that little edge was. There was a wall there and there was another wall over here. I took out two walls to open it up. I'm like, ah, oh, it's going to be too tight with the tank in here. So I had to take out a couple walls and like <laughs> open up the space so that it would all flow and fit and look good. But I'm, I'm stoked I did. It's like all these little things, sacrifices, I'm not even sacrifices, improvements you make to make your, your tank shine and fit and flow in the situation. It's a bit more difficult here. Um, mm -hmm. our, most of our houses are, ma are made with brick and they have, you know, brick supporting walls and even the mm -hmm. walls that aren't supporting a brick. So yeah. it's not as easy to take a wall down. You know what I mean? So really you've got to work with what you got. Like, you know, like <laughs> I have the the cupboard under the stairs behind mm -hmm. my tank, which are called the Harry Potter cupboard. And, you know, ideally, you know, mm -hmm. I'd like to take that full wall out and, you know, put a peninsula tank that separates the two rooms, but can't do it because it's supporting wall. My aunt lives in Mexico and same thing. The walls are all kind of brick and plastered over. I want to like move a plug. So the guy comes in, he's like, tick, 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 just like chisels up the wall, runs a new wire, plasters back over it. I'm like, eh. It works. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's uh, unless you've got like other walls inside the house where you can do that. Yeah, most of most of our houses are just brick, and it's like you just got to work with what you got. Yeah, I don't think okay. That's fair enough. Um, well, yeah, I had to I do don't I don't know if you're still here. I just mm -hmm. noticed before in the chat that Charter House Aquatics popped in. Um, they're a UK fish company. Yeah, um, they got a good YouTube channel too. Yeah, they've got their yeah. own YouTube, YouTube channel, um, and they just popped in a minute ago, so I want to say hi. Don't know if it was Ryan. If it was Ryan, hi. Yep. Welcome, welcome. Um, so, yeah, mul multiple tank syndrome is kind of real. I find most people end up just adding another one, another one, another one, and all of a sudden they got so many tanks, and then they upgrade and they consolidate. And it's kind of this vicious cycle back and forth. Yeah, definitely. It's, 
it's it's one of those with the reefing hobby as well. It's a bit different in freshwater, mm. but with in the reefing hobby, you you sort of like expected to sit with the same tank for years. You know what mm. I mean? You know, it's 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 expected that you do that. Whereas with freshwater, you set up a tank, you run it for six months to a year, then you break it down and do another one. You know what I mean? It's just mm. that constant thing. Um, so you know, it's a bit more difficult for us to try different things often mm. unless we have multiple That's tanks fair. all over the place yeah you know I mean? for me it always tends to be i run out of coral space and i want more corals and then it's like okay i need a bigger tank or more corals that's honestly like half my every every upgrades can't fit all my corals too cramped bigger tank i'm like that at the moment with the one you know <laughs> i've liked that i said this is the one this is the tank yeah. this is the tank i'm going to stick with and then i'm thinking i'm looking at it thinking I could get another foot on that side of the tank. I could get another foot on that side. Of the, I could have a six footer on that wall. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm thinking, I think it wouldn't be that hard because it's all the aquascape is one piece. So mm -hmm. I could just go like that, lift it out and put it in a new tank. And I'm thinking, mm. but then I'm like, but I've said that this is the one. I can't change it. You're <laughs> so committed. It's like, oh. <laughs> you already divorced the wife and you got the one now. So, <laughs> well. Just with a quick one, if anybody is watch, if anybody does watch my channel, the Aaron's Aquarium channel, watch it on Sunday. On Sunday, I'm going to be putting a big announcement out, and the wife is a part of it. So that's all I'm back. She's coming what? back. She's well, yeah, she's well, oh. she's coming back. Yeah, nice, she's nice. Back. Yeah, uh. so the, the wife, she's she couldn't bear to leave me. You know, she couldn't bear it. <laughs> She's had, she's had a couple of months away. You probably couldn't get out of the house. You're like, eh, let's leave it in. Yeah, no. <laughs> she's had a few months away from me. She couldn't stand it. The grass mm -hmm. wasn't greener, so she's come back. <laughs> nice. And I've got a really, really good skate plan for it. So looking forward to that one. Ooh, that'd be awesome. Nice. Are you going to keep it peninsula mode? Uh, I'm not telling you anymore. Ah. You've already got you've already got the flipping YouTube flipping studio <laughs> exclusive. You're not having any more. <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> <sighs> It'll be so, good. Yeah. Um, um so like for you then, you know, like yes. how did you how did you start? Because obviously, you know, obviously yep. we know how I started, but when did right. you how did you get into it? We we will go way back. So my original first tanks was when I was like younger, probably elementary school. And this is completely random, but I remember we had little like freshwater crab stuff. And I remember coming home from school one day and I was running across the floor of the house and it climbed up the airline, totally made a little break for us. Like, you little buggers, go pick them up, put them back in the tank stuff. But um, so that was all that. Um, then years later, I don't know what happened. For whatever reason, we didn't have a tank for a while. And my girlfriend at the time she had this little like, I was like, oh yeah, I kind of want to do a tank again. And she had this little one. It's like a little six gallon fluval edge. And I was, so she gave it to me, set that up for a freshwater tank. And then within, you know, so that was up, awesome little tank. A few months later, it went bigger than another tank. And then I really got into the planted tanks. So I was all hardcore with like the shrimp and the planted tanks. And then there was another one, same thing, same with the reef tanks, right? Multiple tanks. So I had a little, little tiny planted one. Then I went up to a bigger tank, not an 84 gallon. And then I started breeding shrimp, so I had all of these little fancy, like crystal shrimps and red ones and blue ones and black and white polka dot and all the random stuff. So I had all this big shrimp obsession. And then one day I was just like, ah, salt water can't be that hard. So I had a little twelve gallon fluval edge, and I converted that one to a uh, saltwater tank. And that was my first one. And after that, I realized I started to neglect all the freshwater tanks, and then I kind of just merged all over to saltwater. That's kind of how the, the addiction started. Yeah. I tried for a little bit to go back. Mm -hmm. so I find, it's weird to say that, you know, go back to freshwater because, you know, some we sort of like to see it as a progression, don't we, where we do freshwater a bit, then we go, in, we go into the next stage of saltwater. But there's so, there's so many, you know, nice freshwater tanks. And, like, if you go to, like, a high-tech planted tank, more work They're salt. as difficult as SPS tanks. More work. Harder. Yeah. Because you know what I mean? I had okay, so I had an 84 gallon packed packed planted tank. High tech CO2 E5 lights on and I built my own doser because I didn't even know dosers were a thing at the time. So I built my own doser. I had it dosing all the fertilizers. Every week I literally pulled out a five gallon bucket of plants for trimming it. Like that tank was a lot of work. So yeah. 
I would easily say that the corals are easier. They grow slower. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those as well. Anybody get? It, it, I I know for me, like it, it used to get me well frustrated when you'd have like this beautiful tank of plants, mm -hmm. and then you'd have algae growing on the plants. It's like. I've already got plants. How's this happening? <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got mm. algae growing on leaves and everything. It's like, oh, pulling yep. an air out. You're constantly like wiping the leaves off or cutting dead leaves away or toothbrushing mm. everything or whatever else. And it's like, oh, it's mental. <laughs> I honestly think, I honestly think if you go, if you are a freshwater keeper mm -hmm. and you full on planted, you like high tech planted tank, even you don't even need to be high tech, even like sort of like somewhere in the middle, you would, do salt water like that. It'd be easy yep. for you. <laughs> It'd be so easy. Yeah, hundred percent agreed. I I find salt way easier than onto tanks. Um, not, not that they're hard, but just less maintenance. I'd say. Like the only hard thing with the retank is is dialing your dosing, and even that's not that hard. It takes a few tests. After that, you're good. Yeah, that's it. And then you just yep. keep checking, and if it changes, then just change whichever way. Easy. Mm -hmm. An octopus yeah. tank. That'd be cool. So, so Derek just a time for an octopus tank. Maybe one day. That'd be cool. I was actually Derek's... talking about that today. Yeah? I was actually talking about an octopus tank today, whether or not to get one. They're like, a little oh. like skate artists, though, so you need a good lid. And yeah. Up tight. That's what I mean. Might get, like, a, an acrylic tank made with, like, bolt-on lids. <laughs> 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 to, like, like, a mason jar type lid, like, yeah. <laughs> clips down. <laughs> you got, like, the big, like, bolt thing on top. Yeah, that's it. I actually put pot rivets all around. <laughs> <laughs> you have to drill it out to feed them every day. <laughs> Pretty rivet. Um, a couple of years ago, I remember seeing a video where someone had an octopus tank in the same room as they had a fish tank, and their fish silly kept disappearing. And they're like, "What the hell, right? Where are my fish going?" So he set up a camera and actually watched the octopus climb out of the tank, went over to the next tank, climbed into it, would go for a snack, and then go back to his own tank. Really. Oh yeah, they're sm they're crazy <laughs> smart. It was the wildest yeah, thing to see. Yeah, I've heard that they're really smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was just just amazing to think about that. Eh? Escape from one tank, go to your show tank, go for a snack, and then go back home again. It's Imagine on the camera, you just saw it, it's that like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> and then when it's coming back, it's like, <laughs> yep, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> yep, suck ass, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that super. I don't know. It, it was just crazy. The craziest thing to see. Um, yeah. So my big tank behind me. I was gonna do a, actually the live feed of it, but then the wife's cooking cookies with a friend right now, so there's people everywhere, so it didn't happen. But uh, getting pretty yeah. packed already. I I've literally cleared out a massive chunk of corals from both of my my nano as well as my lagoon tank and stocked her up, and still more coming. So I've not I've not bought any corals for I think. I don't know what the last one was I bought. Um, like I, I got um, a tricolor bubble tip and enemy for the um, for the flu Evo. and that's the mm -hmm. last thing I bought for a while. Like I'm looking at the one, and I'm thinking it needs more coral, but then every single time I'm like, right, I'm gonna buy some coral, it ends up being something else I buy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I need to. I, I really want to sort of like you know really go for it now and just. What I was doing at first was just one inch frags, mm -hmm. um, and they're doing really well. And they, you know, you can see real, real growth. But I want to start putting in some, like, especially now Indonesia's back. Yep. I want to start putting in, you know, some mini colonies or something. You know That's, I mean? Yeah, I've kind of started doing that. I wasn't going yeah. to, but then there was someone shutting in a tank, and a buddy and I split the shutdown. So we had to shut it down for some kind of health reasons. So kind of partially helping them out plus is a great way to stock the tank and so basically all my fish came from that you know good like a good chunk of the bigger chunks of coral came from his tank so it was a good way to kind of give it a new home and stock my tank up so it was great but, yeah mm -hmm. tank shutdowns are always a good way to go plus it saves you a ton like just you know a handful of rags versus a tank full of corals so yeah that's it i, I, I find like i really i've really enjoyed having frags you know because normally like i always buy like colonies mini colonies and go from there but like having the frags and you know because you're looking at them every day you, you can still see them change because mm -hmm. obviously it was like this and now they're like this for example yeah. but it's like it's one of those where it, it when you look at the pictures 
you know, six months ago. And you go, I didn't realize how much that has grown. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like the base has gone like this. And then there's loads of little branches coming out of the base and all this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, because you are watching it every day, you do notice. So like, say, for example, I've got um, a Pinky the Bear Acropora. Mm -hmm. And that, when it grows, it grows white and then goes pink. So I can see new growth as clear as day because it's white, you know, on oh, a pink that's coral. Fair. So you can see it dead clear. But then other corals, like say, for example, I've got um, a, a red Montipora uh, plate or Montipora cap um, mm -hmm. and a green one. And I looked back on a picture the other day and I didn't realize how much it's grown because I put it in like that. And mm -hmm. it was both, oh no, they were sort of like both together like that, you know, stuck them together to try and get them to go into each other, which never happened. The red ones just literally click mm, or yeah. less covered the green one. Um, but the yeah, it was like that. And now they're like mm. plating. You know oh, that's mean? cool. Starting to spiral. So spiral around each other? Yeah. Well, that looks cool. The red, the red ones just, you can see a bit of green. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's awesome. Uh, Zach, quick question about display to sump ratio. No rule of thumb, basically, whatever fits in your stand. Bigger sump, more room for equipment. So, good way to go. My um, chat's not updated. Oh, now it is. There you go. <laughs> you know. uh, many people have asked so far how the Versus are doing. Versus are doing awesome. Um, so far, just the one is running my calcium reactor. Super duper quiet. Really easy to adjust. I'm like, oh, my elk's down a little bit. Just up it by like a mill or two. So really quick and easy. Love that. Uh, my auto water change bin should hopefully be here in the next week or two. And then that's the next one is going to set up to auto water change for so that one. Well, you're a big Radeon man, aren't you? Are you putting the? Are you getting the new Gen fives? I want to. I plan on it. I have. Well, it's my tanks. I, I'm somehow lighting a six foot tank with two fifteens, which is working. I just extended the schedule so they get more light. But I'm hopefully get a Gen five or two, and I'll add on to these, and probably eventually they'll replace both Gen fives. Yeah. But yeah. Again, I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna put. I think I'm gonna get some Gen fives. Because I've yeah. never had um, Radions before. Um, it's not, man. Never tried them before. I never had them before. So I think, you know, I'm going to dip my toe in mm -hmm. with the Gen 5s and give it a go. Yeah. We're they, probably yeah. going to go with the Gen 5 Blues, probably. Yeah. I've been t touring if I will go for the Blues or the Pros. Either, honestly, either one's going to do the job. So mm. a little bit of me like wants the Blues because the, the Blue the oh. blue Heat Sync will look cool. <laughs> yeah. I like the... Um, I, I tend to like my tanks a little bit more white. You know what I mean? I do mm -hmm. like that. So I don't know. I'll see when the time comes. You know what I mean? But, but uh, either one, you're going to be able to make it look the same. So, right? You just drag your blues a... down or you drag your whites up or whatever, right? Either one, you'll be able to make it similar. Yeah. Is there a release date yet? Um. Yeah, yeah probably now-ish. <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah. thing is, when are they going to be in stock, right? That's a yeah. bigger question. I mean, they're, they're out there. If you can find one or pre-order it, it'll probably show up in a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I might, uh, might have a look into that. Um, but yeah, just loads of, loads of things coming, um, mm -hmm. for me, it's just it's been a whirlwind to be honest. Last mm -hmm. five years I've got, well, last two years I've gone from driving trucks for a living to doing this for a living. You know That's what I mean? Crazy. Brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. So no oh. more driving around the country in a big, massive articulated lorry, you know, not lost any weight though. <laughs> <laughs> I thought as soon as I stopped driving, I'd lose weight, but no, I've not lost any weight. <laughs> no, actually, I remember when I first started live streaming. I remember a couple of times you were on in the big rig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to do a few when I was out yeah. and about. I used to throw a few live streams up dinner when I was out and about. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> do, you <awesome>. <laughs> do you know one company that I worked for when I was truck driving? I actually got sacked for doing that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got sacked for making YouTube videos at work. <laughs> Not even live streaming, just making videos. They didn't, your like truck. It. <laughs> didn't even pre warn me. Just like, nope, don't like it. See you in a bit. It's like, uh, enough. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so, so a few people in the chat too were saying that they started reefing because they like the challenge, which is a good one too. It definitely is a little more challenging. Yeah, definitely. Do, do, do you enjoy it? Do you like, do you find that? you know just that that element of oh do you know sometimes that element of frustration is actually mm -hmm. quite nice do you know what i mean do you know it's a, it's a double edged sword cuz sometimes you're like bah, why is this not stable or why isn't this working but at the same time 
that's what makes you dig into it more and learn more and understand it, right? If it wasn't frustrating or if it was too easy, then you'd probably lose interest or you wouldn't do your research and, you know, becomes, you know, more of an expert on learn all this biology and chemistry. So, so on that, on that subject, do you think that the way in which the hobby is going now, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like say for example, with the Radions and, and the new skimmers and, you know, the controllers and the reef bot and all these different things. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing like for the hobby? Because it's making the hobby easier, but mm -hmm. is it making us lazier? Is it, is it making us so that we don't have to learn these things? Because, you know, well, uh, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? All right. I think it has big benefits in the fact that it's going to make people more successful and keep more people in the hobby. Uh, I also think the fact that with you know these coral bands up and down and corals might be harder to get it's a good thing to have more people be successful and stay with it because it's going to make our hobby more sustainable so that aspect i think is a big um it definitely does make some things a lot easier especially if you have auto testers auto dosers like you can automate so much these days it's crazy like you could you know almost autopilot your tank yeah just walk in mix some salt once in a while the amount of stuff that's out there now like with the reef bot the trident the mm -hmm. Alcatronic, the KH director, all these different things, all these different products that are out there. You could literally, like you said, autopilot your tank to a point. And all we're missing now, do you remember that thing that came on Kickstarter, that little robot that used to clean your glass? Yeah, I message them. They keep telling me it was coming out. And then I message them and they're like, oh, now it's fall. Now it's spring. I'm like, ah, I wanted yeah. one for the stair side of my tank. If we had one of those, that would yeah. be set. We wouldn't even have to touch our tanks ever again. It's not like, <laughs> Cloud-based doses, you know, so you can dose your tank from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. this little robot will clean your glass. <laughs> Boom, laughing. <laughs> True, you really could. Uh, I think it's great. I think, to be honest, like, I, well, as you know, you know, there's been many a time when you've done automation live streams and I've been, You're like, you who know, needs a controller? What is this? Like, who needs a controller? Because I can just go over here and flick a switch, you know what I mean? But, you know, I was very naive when it came to it. Um, but since experience and automation since the, the reef bot started it um since getting that changed the game for me really yeah. has you know um it's just been brilliant you know especially like when i've been out and about like for example when we when we go to canada next month i'm not going to get anybody in to look after my tank while i'm away don't need mm -hmm. to just yep. make sure all, all my bottles and all my containers are full mm -hmm. and then everything else i can do on my phone and then when yep. i get home i'll clean the glass <laughs> great way to do it it's great you know what i mean i can go away i can you know and not worry you know what mm -hmm. i mean i can get every bit of information that i need if my alkalinity is dropping whilst i'm away i can just change my dose in canada it's great yeah. it's true it. it's cool that you can do that right yeah. um like you don't need it but it's definitely nice um scott morris had a question first and i missed it we asked your question scott i'm scrolling to find it now Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Aaron, I want an AI Prime 16 HD for my Evo. Good upgrade, question mark? Uh, it, the AI Prime 16? Yeah, it would be. Do you know, to be honest, um, since I've been using the Evo now for, what, three months or so? Um, I think it's about three months getting on that. And I mm -hmm. find that the actual Evo light is pretty good. It's mm -hmm. working um zoas are growing so i've got mm -hmm. some other chaos zoas in there and they i think i put three in originally i think i've got six now um i've got a roll uh, sorry a tricolor bubble tip and enemy in there doing great looks beautiful um and um uh, what else have i got um just some other zoas just some random zoas and everything's doing great you know so i think the old the evo light is worth sticking with for a mm -hmm. little bit. Obviously, if you want to start putting like, you know, more demanding coral in there and stuff, then yeah, the prime will do the job great. You just got to mm -hmm. look on Instagram or wherever and you can see loads of tanks that are running the previous primes, the prime HDs. Um, so I got it, works well. Yeah, it's great. You know, they're just, um, they're just perfect for the job because the, the form factor of them is great. But mm -hmm. it means that you've got to take the lid off. And it makes the Evo a little bit more work. I know you can put an auto top up in and stuff, but it blasts through water when that mm -hmm. lid comes off. Oh, yeah. It really does. It's, um, an, it's amazing how much a lid makes a difference. 
Like, huge difference. Huge. I, I, all I have to do is put a pint of RO water into that tank once a week, and that's it. If I take the lid off, God, I think I'm putting in a pint every other day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the lid makes a huge difference. So that's why I'm sticking with the Evo light for now. Mm -hmm. because i get to keep the lid on <laughs> you know what I mean? that, that's fair my um i got a re i'm actually quarantining stuff finally after years and years so i got a little red sea old school red sea tank with like the plastic lid on it like the 130d or whatever it is so that one is my quarantine but i don't need an auto top off nothing like it barely evaporates anything it's great so mm -hmm. it's the only tank i'll do that with but i appreciate that well um my the one's got some acrylic lids on it, mm -hmm. um, but the um, the tank's actually bowed. Um, oh really? Yeah, it's bowed. So it's got a Euro brace on it, but it's bowed, mm -hmm. and it's bowed quite. So this is another thing where I'm a little bit thingy about the tank is because it's it's what it's bowed quite a bit, um, to the point where when I put the lids on now they just fall straight through. The wife so, or the one? The one. The, the one. the one. The one. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, the wife's glass. Um, yeah. But the, the acrylic tank, it has bowed um, quite a bit now where, you know, if I put the lids on, they just drop right through. So when the lids were on the tank, it was brilliant. You know, 25 litres of RO water would last me like 10 days. Now yeah. it's lasting like five. You know what I mean? Just because the lids are off. You know? so, yeah. So um, it would be good to, to, to have lids. I think if I could ever, if I ever had a choice of having lids and not having lids, I'd always choose lids because I haven't found um, an issue with light, mm -hmm. you know, like with light penetration, because that was one big worry that all the condensation underneath the lid would yeah. affect the light. But I've not, I've not seen a, an issue with it. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With it. Perfect. Um, yeah, the theory was it caused hot spots. I don't really know how true that is. I know, like, if I look at the lid in your mind. I definitely do get some water drops, but I don't know how big of a deal the hotspot is. Mike, thanks for the two dollar super chat. Uh, are you asked still selling those prime shutters? I sure am. Uh, Vivid Creative Aquatics website. I did paste the link in the chat, and those are the little ones that plunk into the prime, and you can kind of shape the light. I originally designed them just for my refugium, so I stopped getting algae growth in the skimmer. But I see lots of people use it on their tanks too, so they're not seeing the puck and the light and all that stuff. But yeah, they work pretty normal. Do they work with the new ones? They sure do. There's a slightly modified peg for it that now works. So, works for both systems. There you go. Proper lighting fun. Thanks, Nick. You, you mean my 215s on six feet isn't proper yet? <laughs> 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 Thanks for the super chat, buddy. Much appreciated. This is actually a legit fund. I need to work on more lighting for that tank. So, thank you. <laughs> Nick, everybody, everybody's up late, aren't they? And Woody, I, this is because I. It's, this is an early live stream for me normally. Woody, hello devs. $10 super chat. Thanks, Woody. Haven't seen you in a while either. Much appreciated, buddy. I might get a new G5 ray down in the middle sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> you still got a way to go. <laughs> what, I know, I, mean, I know. $830. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to work at least one soon because I have more spread. And if I can at least throw one in the middle and spread out my 215s for now, it'll be good. We'll see. <laughs> Definitely do need some more light, but yeah. they're on. So, okay. So two things with lighting. So right now you can either do like, you can have a more intense period for a shorter time, or you can have less intense for a longer time. In theory, you can still give your corals the same amount of light energy. So I just have a really long schedule right now to kind of make up for my lack of intensity. Cause I'm doing six feet on two tanks. So, so how long, how long have you stretched it out to, to, to sort of like, cope with the uh the the the, the, the less i'm light. gonna s it's probably somewhere between 10 to 12 hours of high intense like axed out high intensity i'm up there right. yeah so <laughs> <laughs> super chat bomb <laughs> oh, thank you thank you dick <laughs> it is super yeah, chat so bomb that, so it's gonna be one of those then isn't it where um in a <laughs> so what's how's that gonna work then like you know, because obviously the, 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 the corals in within range, should we say? Yep. Um, have you spread them out already? Like, you know, already like say like on a six foot tank, have you got like one here and one here, for example? Um, well, you can kind of see in the background, they're kind of just the two thirds in the center. Uh, <laughs> Devin needs lights. Briefing with Donuts, Rich is Woody and Paul. Uh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> this is legit. You're really there. You're really there, so 
Come on, lads. A bit more. I got <laughs> half a puck, there. yes. <laughs> it's um, almost one for an XR15 here. <laughs> yes. Hey, 115 in the middle will definitely help push it a bit more. Uh, Providence Title Reef for Hello from Rhode Island. I was in Rhode Island last year, actually. So, welcome. Nice to see you out there. Oh, I can see, I can see the picture now. I yeah. Can see it. Yeah, see it on the phone. Yeah, so yeah, like... That, yeah, so I get... So it's, it's, it's spread out enough, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it's... that the corals that are in range are not going to absolutely get too bombarded. Yeah. So I actually only planned on having fish in the tank for a little while and not even doing corals yet. Until, but then that tank shutdown mm-hmm. happened, so it, it had to come. The guy was leaving town. And it was the only time, so it made it work. Um, <laughs> reefing with the booyah. Uh, thank you, buddy. Okay, so first thing, um, I've had a few people comment on the video too because they're like, "Oh my god, so many fish so quick in your tank." Um, I use copious amounts of cycling bacteria, like ridiculous amounts of bacteria in the tank. Um, all the rock in there was pre-cycled since prior to Christmas, so I had a good two months of cycling with bacteria, the Brightwell bacteria, which cycles in seven days, and I had two months of pre-cycling the rock. Add all the sand, dumped it a ton more bacteria. Added ammonia, made sure it could process it. When I added the fish, I dumped it to add more bacteria. So there is no shortage of nature fine bacteria in that tank. So you definitely don't have to cycle your tank for months and months and months. You just got to make sure that your army is sufficient enough to handle all that load when you put your fish into it. Yeah, 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 definitely. I know, like, nowadays, it's just a good way of doing it, and it? It's just mm-hmm. make, make cycling just that little bit quicker that little bit more bearable. <laughs> well, especially with new reefers, right? Because no one wants to wait months and months and months, especially when you need to spend 30 bucks on a bottle of bacteria and cycle your tank in a week, right? Instead of months. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You know, obviously, the, you know, I, I always say like nowadays, you know, you don't bake your own bread that often, if ever, nowadays, because you can just go to the shop and buy some. Yep. Same sort of thing, really, you know. Mm-hmm. Although, yes, you can do what I call a traditional cycle where mm-hmm. you can put ammonia in and wait and wait and wait and all that lot whereas nowadays you know you can put the bacteria in straight from the off and it cuts that wait period out of waiting for the bacteria to come into fruition so to speak so yep you know why wait exactly (laughs) and i arguably had actually a very long cycle time with it just in a brew can because it was christmas and holidays and i basically forgot about and just left in there for long just fed it bacteria or ammonia once in a while keep it going (laughs) <laughs> oh, <laughs> these radions are expensive, Dev. I had to sell my kids to afford them. You don't have kids. You need these super chats. <laughs> 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 this is true. I got no kids to sell. <laughs> uh, Nick's super chat grenade. Uh, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Uh, Mike, I'm trying to build a bioload in the frag tank since it's bare bottom, but the bacteria said you couldn't really feed heavily for a week. Um the bacteria so if you're adding bacteria to your tank um turn off uv ozone skimmer you don't want anything that's going to take out your bacteria and you could just dump into the tank now from that you do want to feed the bacteria if it doesn't have a food source it will die off so you could be ghost feeding your tank could be frozen could be flake food or get some pure ammonia um, i actually use the brightwell one which has a little bit of nitrate and phosphate mixed with ammonia so they kind of target it to specifically feed the bacteria and the whole point is just build up that strong army before you add stuff, and then once you add it, it's already there to handle everything. Mm-hmm. Oh no! Mm-hmm. Oh. I have the ocean near me, so a reef tank it is perfect. Have you ever considered using? Um, I don't know how easy it is for you to access, but have you ever considered using natural seawater? It is a good four-hour drive, so I'll, uh, no. Um, if it, if I live by the ocean, absolutely. I would have, like, a pump and a giant hose out there for my water chain. I'd be like, boop, 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 perfect. Um, but sadly, I do not live on a sunny beach somewhere, so I mix my synthetic salt. Have you ever used natural? Yeah, there's, yeah. Um, there's a few companies in the UK that um, basically they all uh, get, you know, deliveries, basically, of natural seawater um so it's collected from um i think it's dorset um in the uk in a really nice section of the country where you know not no shipping lanes or anything like that and i think it's mm-hmm. collected something like three miles out three miles down or something like that anyway so it's not like collecting it from the beach for example mm-hmm. um and then there's um, there's a company um in sheffield called fit Fil- fit filtration that has like i don't even know how many it is it's like 30,000 liters of the stuff or something at any mm-hmm. one time, you know. Oh, yeah. So, 
Um, nice. Every single time when I started the wife, um, mm -hmm. they filled it up with natural seawater. When I started the one, they also filled it up with natural seawater. And I think it's just sort of like, rather than starting off with a completely sterile tank, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just good to like I don't do water changes with natural seawater and once I've done my initial setup because for me as well it's not I can't just go down to the beach and get it you know what I mean yeah um it's miles away mm -hmm. plus as well the beach is near me I wouldn't even touch anyway <laughs> but I think it's a good way to start the tank if you can get like a decent you know quality natural seawater that's not just taken from a, a boat strip mm -hmm. uh, because it's got you know certain things in it you know even just things like certain nutrients just at the beginning so you're not starting off with a completely fresh rodi synthetic salt mix which is you know straight out of box sterile type thing you know what i mean starting mm -hmm. the tank with that i think it just gives it that little bit more of an edge you know just that little bit more of a a better start you know what i mean yep. no I, I i agree i would probably if i had the option in a local source i'd probably do it uh, so Mike was asking a question, if he does a half gallon water change, avoiding dosing, if you have a small tank, you're doing a half gallon water change and softies are probably fine. LPS, maybe if you start getting encrusting corals, that's probably not going to keep up after a while. Um, but yeah, no, I would definitely, and to your point, you got to make sure it's collected from a clean source, not full of pollutants, not right at the edge at the boat launch type of thing. So definitely makes a difference. Christian yeah. Christian reefing, how should I move copper treatment for my quarantine when it's done with fish? Too big water change. I would just completely drain it and restart it. Um, there is media that can absorb copper, but honestly, you're probably better to just drain the tank, give it a good wash, clean off, and then refill it. You can use a um, Seachem Cuprisorb as well, I think. Yep. Um, that'll do it. Even um, the po polyfilter pads as well, don't they? Uh... I don't know how much they absorb though. But they probably will. Yeah. Koopy Zorb yeah. would for sure. Koopy uh, Zorb, yeah. You yeah. can use something like that um, if you want to. But yeah, the easiest way is just drain it and fill it back up with you. <laughs> then you definitely exactly. know you're easier. It way easier. Uh, Justin, should I buy Gen 4, Gen 5 for my Red Sea Max and Nano? I'm assuming you're talking about an XR15 because anything else would be extremely overkill for that tank. Honestly, either tank's going to do, either light will do the job and be more than enough. Gen 4s are still amazing light. That's what I have on all my things right now. They're awesome. Can't see this flipping. I've got that many lights in here now. It's yeah. like when I go like that with a phone, it shines back at yeah. me. I'm trying to put it somewhere so I can see it. Mm -hmm. Fellow Reefer. Message for Aaron. How you doing, dude? Thank you. Aaron is the one I fell in love with with the Storm Clownfish and let him know to spend some serious money on them and both love them. Uh... Very nice. Storm Clownfish, eh? They're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I lost those, though, while I was on holiday. <laughs> oh, no. Absolutely, absolutely gutted about that. Um, oh. Came home from holiday. Gone. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't fun. That that sucks. Oh, I, it's always sad losing a fish or a coral, anything. Just make... Yeah, I've got some um, golden nugget clowns to replace them. Oh, my mm. God. That was the biggest mistake in my life. <laughs> oh my god literally the female it doesn't matter where i am if you know if i'm adding a new coral like mm -hmm. she doesn't attack me she attacks the coral which i don't understand you know but if i put fresh super glue on i'm i'm like trying to keep her away I'm like stop it you're gonna stick your mouth together <laughs> you know super glue? And then, I'll, even when i'm feeding them she's mm -hmm. like you know i'll uh i'm just gonna attack you <laughs> And then the male will see what's going on, what's going on here, and then he'll join in. Is she bite still you? only like, they're not massive yet. Okay, do they bite you? Yeah, all the if time. I, if I touch my clown's coral, one of them will bite me. Yeah. I, it, it doesn't really hurt, but it startles you. It makes you like jump and throw your hand back. You're like, what the? Well, I got, um, I got bit off the uh, Niger trigger the other day. Ooh, that they got was, some chompers. Uh, that felt like an electric shock. Yeah. <laughs> right on the... Um, right on the in between your two two knuckles like your finger there um i was just sort of like i was adjusting the gyres mm -hmm. and as i was as i got it in if my hand's in he knows it's my hand he, he won't touch me but when like my fingers is just in if he, he thinks it's food and he's straight on me and i and i know what he's gonna do and normally i'm pretty wise to it now but because mm -hmm. i was adjusting the gyres and i was talking to my wife i thought i'd got electrocuted 
I had jumped, I punched the light because I jumped that much, <laughs> water everywhere. And then I could just see him sort of like going around. And then he was a little mark, a little teeth mm. mark in his finger where he bit me. I was like, oh, oh got, dang. Got, me, got me this time. <laughs> dang. Fellow reefer, I remember him spending 600 plus on those per clown. Woo, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nick gold, was... nuggets, gold nuggets are uh, derived from maroon clowns. Yeah, yeah I know. And to be honest, I really like maroon. Do you know when they're fully like when they're like that? When mm -hmm. they're big, I love maroon clowns when they're big. Obviously, the the nightmares, but it's one of those. It's like I've had common clowns, all the clowns. You know, mm. they've all bit me. <laughs> so it's like fair enough. You know what I mean? It's it's something that I, I come to when I like. I've got a pair of platinum. Uh, Platinums are Wyoming white clowns in the Fleet mm. Levo. And they're not being hosted by anything yet. You've got one up in one corner and one up in the other corner at night. And they're beautiful. You know, they'll take flake from my fingers. They're just model citizens. Yeah. Now, as soon as they notice that bubble tip and enemy that's in that tank, it's like Jekyll and I, they mm. will turn. <laughs> they'll go from these dead nice fish to horrible. Yes. <laughs> That's once, why when people, yeah. Do you know once when they host something say about, oh, I really wish my clowns would, you know, be hosted by the anemone. Like, nope, don't do no. it. <laughs> don't do it. Enjoy, enjoy the, enjoy the peace while you've got it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. If they're not hosting, they're fine. The second they host something, like you're fine unless you touch their coral, then it's on. They're like, get out of my house. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just like fight you. I don't care who you are. It's like the old farm guy with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the female maroon clown dangling mm. off the tail fin of my purple tang. Like, really? My purple tang will not go near her area at all. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. She's learned. Yeah. Brilliant. I love, see, that's the thing, though, isn't it? You know, the, just the, the character of fish. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you, you've got like a little personality there. Do you know what I mean? Yep. In, in your little box. You know, mm -hmm. it's brilliant. that's what I love about this hobby is. is even something just as simple as a clownfish can just bring so much enjoyment and pain. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And they all do have their own personality. Actually, one thing that's cool, I got a Red Sea. I think it's called like a Dejarni or Dejar something like that. It's a sailfin. And it's like darker grayish colors, like yellow vertical lines on them. But he can turn almost white. And I'll, I'll kind of want sometimes and it'll be like white and yellow. and like, what the heck? It's just crazy to see how much of a difference the shades they can change. Yeah, the, pur the purple tang, you know, and um, the purple tang goes really pale at night. You know, mm -hmm. if I come in the room and obviously like I've got to go through my dining room to get to the kitchen yeah. and, you know, say like it's 10 o'clock and all the lights are out and the room's dark and I go flip the light on to go through and all like the yellow tang has this like long white stripe down its side. The purple tang's gone really, really like pale. So is the Achilles tang. He's just gone really, really pale. Um, and they've all just like changed color. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the light comes back on, it's like, ooh, <laughs> and the color comes back. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, it, it is so crazy. I'm going to go look at my purple tonight. That's why I have a purple for the first time. Uh, S, $2 super chat. Thank you, sir. Aaron, best shop in the Northwest for acros. Northwest for acros. Um, Kraken Corals has a real good selection of acros, more or less every single day so you've got kraken corals um you've got uh for acros really um uh, oasis aquarium that's manchester way um they have some really good acros um uh don't really know um if in the northwest that's all i can really think um unless yeah that's all i can really think of mm -hmm. yes. so there you go those are your options <laughs> there you go so purple tank. Mode, anyway there's yeah. there's many 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 shops out there for, for like all other types of corals but for like mm -hmm. acro specifically then mm -hmm. i'd probably say they're the, the best go-to's you know it's completely random thought it's kind of made me laugh because someone was talking about fox face and yellow tang in the chat or paula's um so my whole plan with this tank, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get one or two big fish. I'll have tons of little fish. I somehow have the most tangs I've ever had in my life in this tank. So it's just, I have three yellows in there now, which actually looks pretty cool. Listen, but... I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those, you know, you know me. It's like, I always 
try and stay away from tangs because tangs just always cause me trouble. And it's like a magnetic pull. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I'm not going to have any tangs in this tank. I'm not going to, oh, all right then. <laughs> oh, I think I have six in mine already. It's just like so much for no big fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. It's mad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I've never had a fox face. I don't, I know the really good algae grazers and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but they just don't appeal to me. I've never, I just, I just don't like them. You know what I mean? I've never, I've never liked one. The, the mag, is it the magnificent, magnificent yep. one that's not yellow? It's more of a paley color. Um, uh, maybe. One? I don't know. Yeah, I've honestly never paid a ton of attention just because I know they, the bright they yellow one, it, isn't there? The, the, the bright yellow one with like the badger face. And mm -hmm. then there's a, a lighter color one. The lighter yeah. color one, I'd probably, if I had to, get. But the yellow one, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, how am I liking my testers? <laughs> I'm like, which one? Your reef connected machine. All right. So I have two different ones. We got the reef bot, which Michael also has that one. And that one, you can put on all your vials and test that way. And then the other one I have is the algatronic. That one tests strictly alkalinity, but I have that one testing actually every four or five hours right now because I'm dialing in my calcium reactor and then on this tank every 12 hours. This is about your bedtime. I'm freezing. It's cold. It's cold. cold. Yeah. yeah I'm cold. But it is getting close. I'm going uh, to have to go in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But I am cold. I am cold. But yeah, I've, yeah, got, right. um, I've got the reef bot. The reef bot's yep. been brilliant. I've absolutely mm -hmm. loved the reef bot. It's just been, it's just great the fact that, you know, you know what it's like when your reagents are coming to the end mm -hmm. and you get this notification saying you've got two more tests left until yeah. you need to replace the reagents. And it's like, mm -hmm. right, all right, I'll sort that out. And then the next thing is like, right, you can't do any more tests. It's like, oh, no. Now, if that was no. like some sort of like specific reagent to the reef bot, you're mm -hmm. going to have to source it from somewhere, wait for it to come. But because it uses normal everyday test kits mm -hmm. uh, whatever you know you can just go oh pop to the shop grab one stick it in mm -hmm. and there you go you know it's, which, it's, which it's, is nice it's so cool i love it how how often do you test and what are you testing with yours so at the moment i test alkalinity every day mm -hmm. um so i what i've done is i've set up a little schedule so i test alkalinity at 6 a.m mm -hmm. i test calcium at 7 a.m Mm -hmm. And then I'll test either phosphate or nitrate at 9 a.m., depending on which one's in the bot, because yep. the current test kits that I use mean that I can't have both both phosphate and nitrate in the reef bot at any one time, mm -hmm. because there's only eight slots, and yep. those kits together is nine. Mm -hmm. I am thinking I'm going to change the Salifert KH and swap that for the Red Sea KH, because that's only one vial. And then mm -hmm. that will mean I'll be able to test alkaline, calcium, phosphate, and nitrate, you know, without having to change anything. Yep. So um, what I do is, is I set my um, tester to test up until 9 a.m. So then, you know, by that time, um, got up, done everything that I needed to do, dropped the kids off at school, all my mm -hmm. tests are done. So I've not, you know, the reef, the reef bot, as you know, it's not quiet. <laughs> my it's, mine tests uh, at four or five six in the morning so i don't even notice it i just wake up I'm like ah there's my results that's what i do i just have it yep. testing while i'm asleep yep. so that when i wake up my results are on my phone job done and then once it's finished doing its tests mm -hmm. i've got my doser set to start dosing from 9 a.m so that i can sort of like the the the, the results that i get are not affected mm -hmm. by the dose do you know yep. what i mean that makes sense so that's, that's the idea so it's good uh, the fact that i can test those things that's awesome. Casey Reef said to say hi. And Derek says Reefbot Pro for the Harry Potter closet. <laughs> Reefbot Pro. Do you know what? I swear to God, the Reefbot Pro got announced, didn't it, the other day? Yeah. And I was like, ooh, I think, you know, 21 slots. You could test every test vial in the fish store. You're like, yeah. one of every test kit, please. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was like, hmm, yeah, like just one of everything, please. I'm going to yeah. test everything. <laughs> and then it was like three thousand pounds, and I'm like, "Ooh, <laughs> my emails, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll have to come back 
for you on that one. <laughs> That's fair. Well, if you had like a, a aquaculture, like a big coral cro- facility or something, that'd be wicked for that. Because you're like, ah, here's everything important. I think it would oh. be perfect. So like in the in the UK, uh, mm-hmm. I've been a rep in the UK for a while. I've been like a media manager for a, for a UK distribution company. And I've traveled all around the UK visiting shops. And basically nowadays, we there's a new pet shop license. And part of getting your pet shop license, you have to test um, your aquariums multiple times a week. Um, in some cases, every day. Um, but, you know, I think it's at least three days or something. So something like the ReefBot Pro would mm-hmm. be brilliant because you can connect it to two tanks or something like that. Um, so if you've got like fish systems, a coral bay or something like that, you could just connect it to that. And then to fulfill sort of like your uh, your pet shop license, mm-hmm. stick that on, show the, the council ever, there's my results mm-hmm. all on my phone. Boom. And it frees up a nice. member of staff because you're not having to test it yourself. That'll do it. Oh, pretty cool. even my own tanks, I have auto testers because I'm a slacker on testing. So it's perfect. <laughs> That's always been my biggest problem is been testing. You know, uh, Reef Community Worldwide, Paul used to do Test Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And that kept me, te- kept me testing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was doing a job that was just like pain in a bum. So I never, in the end, I couldn't make it to Test Tuesday. And every single Test Tuesday that I missed, was every single time I've missed my testing. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm dead lazy with testing. So that's why the ReefBot has been brilliant for me. Yep. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Um, only issue with multiple tanks is you can only use six meters of cable each tank. <laughs> oh, I think he's talking about the hose length for the bot. <laughs> yeah, you, you, there, is a, there is a length limit in there. Mm-hmm. I actually devised this plan at one point have like auto water change for both tanks but alternate which day they alter water change and have like a little holder vial that overflows through the water change so i could like test all the tanks and which day would depend on which tank i was testing but that didn't happen but i had this <laughs> whole idea devised so i could have one set of testers to test both tanks yeah yeah <laughs> well, but a lot less work you could sort of like do it like the uh do you know the way the um the testing vial works in the reef mm-hmm. where you know where the water goes in and water goes yep. out you could like get just a big cylinder with a, a doser connected to it that pumps mm-hmm. water in and another head of your doser that pulls the water out so when your uh, reef bot's getting ready to to test you know whatever fill that up with your tank water and then dump it and then f- new tank water from the other tank and do another test yeah it's true it's true uh fellow reefer mentioned calcium reactor and wanted to and wanted to know, and can you use Neptune Dose with a calcium reactor? Um, to feed it, I'm assuming you could, but they're just a little on the loud side. So if it's in a garage or somewhere, yeah, I have at her. But if it's in your stand, then it might be a little on the loud side to feed it that way. Uh, auto. No. Uh, just do what I do, auto water change the tanks, just mix them together. If I had an easy way to connect them, I totally would, because that would make life much, much better. We're gonna tea solenoid that could work too. Hmm. Speaking of solenoids, I actually ordered a bunch and I'm gonna make some like auto water flush thing for my ODI unit. So we'll pre flush it, kill the TDS creep, flush the membrane, and then fill my bin. So future project coming up. Big pile of I solenoids need, on my desk. I need a big I need a bigger RO unit. I've only got a fifty yeah. gallon today one. Uh, so reefing with oh, what calcium reactor media are you using now that Reborn isn't available? I'm still using Re- Reborn, and I didn't actually know it was available. So, fill my reactor from before it actually lasts ages. So that's the nice thing with calcium reactor: you fill it, and you're good for like a year. I've never um, I, I used a reef bot. I'm sorry, a reef bot, a calcium reactor years ago, but I could never get you know. It, you know, tuning it and stuff. I know the, the, the calcium reactors nowadays are a lot easier to uh, to tune, aren't they? I know some of them on board line do it all themselves, don't they? But yep. when I when I first got my first calcium reactor, it was like, oh, too much hassle. <laughs> yeah. Too much messy. I don't know. I find them, once they're set up, they're fairly easy. Um, I don't know. I checked a Canadian site and they're in stock. Maybe you're making one if I should order some now. <laughs> you have to you have to stuck it up quick <laughs> at the cart <laughs> right dev uh, i'm gonna have to go yeah so it's uh, midnight for you there 
night yeah so i'm gonna have to go awesome well, thank you for inviting me on look forward to seeing you next month um no doubt it will be a lot of fun oh yes and sir oh oh actually before i go yeah i need i need advice i need advice That's because good. i am literally i hate the cold as you've just seen it's not even that cold in here but i'm cold so i'll put the <laughs> coat on bring your jacket um, you'll be fine it's going to be cold there, isn't it? You know, Probably. I have a look East at the weather and it could be minus two to five or something like that. So awesome. what would you suggest? Because oh. I'm going to be in, inside and outside, you know, going just, to the... Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Just bring whatever you normally wear. I mean, if you have a warmer jacket, bring it. Like, honestly, I'm probably just going to bring have a t-shirt, a sweater, and maybe we'll bring, like, the thin little puffy jacket. Be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. We'll venture. So if that's what you're bringing, then I'm bringing full thermals. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, full we'll thermals go. and everything. And the flipping someone else's heat packs to put in my pocket. <laughs> you're funny. We'll, we'll go look at the waterfall. We'll do a little live stream from the waterfall. <laughs> Michael's yeah. be frozen from the mist. Yeah, that, you'll just see me <laughs> like that with the camera, even the stabilization in the camera won't be able to end it because I'll just be like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Right. Okay, no, right. I'm going to go. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining tonight. Um, if you did, you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you need to make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you guys on next week's stream. And Michael, if you haven't checked him out, check out Aaron's Aquarium. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to check out Sunday. Big video coming Sunday. Now I'm curious, too. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>